Hello everyone, this is Carol E, Sarah E, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I want to share something. There's different kinds of love. I, uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, as you may have surmised, um, I'm going through something right now. Psychosomatically. Psychosomatic is like a mind and body connection. And it can go for good or for bad. We need to learn how to take charge of what our minds tell our bodies. If we want to be healthy, physically or mentally. If we want to achieve mental wellness or if we even want to achieve physical health, good physical health. I have a health module in my mental wellness process, and it, for me, it very much collaborates with my behavioral module, and thoughts, thought processes, and attitudes very rapidly become behavioral issues if they're bad. If the attitude is bad, or if the thought process is faulty, or malevolent, or maladaptive, it can cause behavioral problems very, very fast. If you've got a problem with getting angry a lot, you're going to have mental issues eventually. It's going to turn into a mental thing and then a behavioral thing. Um, if you um, are scared all the time, if, you're, if you let that fear take over, and you have thoughts that are, that are like, uh, people don't care about me, I'm all alone, or, um, now, uh, maybe physically I'm alone, because nobody, nobody knows me. And how can people love me if they don't know me? But if I can have an abundance mindset and say, I'm still connected to the universe and the planet, and the sun and the moon and the stars and, and the air and the oceans, and still connected to humanity on a spiritual level, then it doesn't matter who knows me and who doesn't. That's an abundance mindset. And, you know, that's just an example of many. But if you have a mindset of agape love, please look it up if you don't know what agape means. A-G-A-P-E. Agape is universal love. Agape can be even called Christian love, as opposed to eros love. Now, eros love has its place. It it, uh, it facilitates producing offspring, and it facil facilitates the bonding process when you get married, when you're on your honeymoon, or when you, when you have uh, feelings for someone, and, uh, you know, God, God lets you go through that so you can find a mate, you can find a partner to marry, and um, produce offspring. And um, even if you can't have children, or if you decide not to have children, you still have the bonding process. So sex should be used only for those two purposes. The bonding process and having children. And um, not for recreation or sport or a hobby. Because if you do that, you can get jaded and desensitized. And it can be very rapidly used as drugs. Now, I want to end with what I tried to begin with here on this uh, episode, you guys. There are certain hormones and chemicals that are produced in the body, believe it or not. You can look that up, too, on your search engine. If you're already on the Internet, you can look that up on your search engine, you guys. Certain chemicals. If you believe in agape love, and if you practice that, you, your body will produce oxytocin, and your immune system will kick in and help you fight disease. If you're well, it'll help you not get sick. If you're sick, it'll help you get well, believe it or not, because you're going to feel like... More, more like everything is okay, like you're not always in danger. If you practice only eros love, or believe that it's that it's a, a sport or a drugs or a uh, a hobby, <clears throat> your body is going to produce different hormones like adrenaline because you're always going to be standing at attention, trying to please other people or trying to um, get people to love you, trying to attract or be attracted to other people constantly. It'll be an obsession. Or a person constantly, it'll be like an obsession. Your body will produce adrenaline. Your body will also produce a stress hormone called cortisol. And uh, 
those those chemicals are good if you're in in fight or flight or if you're in danger but they are no good if you're trying to get over a disease or if you're trying to stay healthy if you're trying to function they're no good all if you, they're in your body all the time um you have to be able to go in rest and digest mode you guys if you want to function or you have to at least be in the state of homeostasis maybe a balanced state of hormones or whatever you know, so um, don't believe it if people keep saying, oh, it's your hormones, it's your hormones. We can regulate with our mindset. If we have an abundance mindset, if we know that we're going to be okay, even if someone doesn't like us, or someone doesn't love us, or we're not loved right now, if we practice an agape mindset, an abundance mindset, we will go through a biochemistry change. We will. Because right now, as I speak, I'm trying to calm myself down by having this belief, having this mindset, you guys. If I keep worrying about what you all think of me, not only am I going to not be able to fight disease, I'm not going to even be able to function because I'll be just too worried about what you guys think of me. And I'll have tunnel vision and tunnel mindset and a lack mindset. Oh, well, who's going to listen to me? Um, I'm afraid to, to speak, and my mind will produce cortisol, my mind will produce adrenaline, and um, I won't be able to talk. I won't be able to, you know, hear what thoughts are even in my mind. It'll just be sounding like, you know, like that. But if I uh, have an abundance mindset, and I feel my, my brain and my body start to produce oxytocin, and safe chemicals, like everything's all right, you're doing just fine, Carol, you know, you're okay, everything's okay, um, you're expressing an opinion, you're expressing your freedom of speech, and you're being respectful, you know, and people, you know, you're going to attract the right kind of people, you know, the, the most compatible people in the world, in your life, if you keep on being yourself, and you keep on being respectful, and you keep practicing agape love, and um, know that Eros is only for a bonding process in marriage and having children as parents. If you have an LGBTQ relationship, um, you can still practice the bonding process with your partner or be celibate, you know, and practice agape love. You can do, do this, you know, even if you're, you know, not uh, traditional, even if you're not heterosexual. So anyway, that's your thought for today. I hope you have a blessed day. May whatever you believe in be with you. You're loved. This is Sarah E. signing off.